Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my August wrap up part one and I have 11 books to talk about. 11 books. So without further ado, we're gonna get into it because um, I read three bad things, <laughs> four medium to lukewarm books, and then four that I really liked and loved. So they're all mixed up. They are every freaking genre. And the only thing I'm really, really happy about actually is that I didn't read a single book from America. So these, none of these are from the US. So, <laughs> all right, let's get started. Let's just dive in. So the first book that I read in August was Lemon by Yo Sun Kwan, who is a South Korean woman in translation. And this was translated from the Korean by Janet Hong. Uh, so this was a net galley. It is coming out October 7th. So this is following a young girl whose older sister was murdered in high school 17 years ago. And over that time, she has decided that she is going to track down and figure out what really happened to her sister all that time ago. So while the premise sounds amazing, I was actually split because the development of the main character, so the younger sister, and one of the murder suspects is particularly good. Um, and you really get into their heads and into like their dynamics and their relationship. But on the flip side, two other major characters, another murder suspect and like the main character's own sister who was murdered are not developed well at all. So it's really hard to be able to try and guess like who did it, what was the older sister up to, why was she brutally murdered in the park. And something else I will say is that you don't definitively find out who the murderer was. You get hints and you're left to your own devices. So I have my own opinion about who killed the sister, um, but you're never told for sure. So if you must know who did it, then this probably won't be the book for you. So personally, I didn't mind the author not giving us a definitive he or she did it, but um, the kind of lopsided character development is why I ended up giving it three stars. So then after that, I wanted to pick up Apple and Knife, which is an Indonesian short story collection, which is dark, macabre, like, and a retelling of popular fairy tales, but through an Indonesian lens. Um, that's what it's supposed to be. But however, the first chapter is just a retelling of Cinderella, like the original Grimm's Tale, with very little changed. I was like, that's really weird. This is just like the exact story, with nothing, nothing else changed. But I'll keep reading. So then I kept reading and I was like, oh no. There's like women shaming, fat phobia, and I think it's, it says that it takes on the patriarchy and it's subversive, but for me, it really missed the subversive mark. And every short story I kept reading, I was like, oh no, I kind of like hate it so much. So this was actually a DNF. Um, and then like when I DNF'd it, I was looking at the back and the person who blurbed it is the other DNF from Indonesia that I read, um, Eka Kurniawan. So I was like, I just don't think this is for me. I've had two DNFs from Indonesia, so I just, I, yeah, I don't really recommend this one and we're gonna move on, but it's a shame because I really wanted to love it, but alas, I don't think, I don't think it's for me. Um, so after that, I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I've had a three, lukewarm, I had a DNF. So I feel like something like easy. So I wanted to read an illustrated something or other. So I went on Night Galley and I saw that I'd recently been approved for a French body horror alchemy illustrated graphic novel. And I was like, that's it, that's it, that's it. So I started reading this. This is Our Alchemical Bodies by Thomas Gilbert, who is a French illustrator and writer. This is following three people. Camille, who is a trans man who recently underwent top surgery and he calls two of his ex-lovers to come join him at a mansion and take part in a body experiment. Um, and one of the lovers is a woman and she's kind of the glue of the group. She's very empathetic. And the other one is a man and he's kind of like the fiery, really angry, rageful one. Um, and the idea is basically if they can transform themselves, 
then all three of them can like combine together into this new being, uh, this new like alchemical body being, which sounds great. However, the writing is so pretentious, but the real reason that I didn't like it is because Camille actually uses his history with both of the other characters to kind of, not gaslight, but kind of like, what's it called, direct them towards self-destruction in the name of transformation. Um, and it's like helping them like towards suicidal ideation or like drowning or blinding themselves. And I'm just like, ooh, okay, yeah, no, I'm not fine with partner abuse and I'm not fine with taking advantage of people who are in a weak place in order to help yourself, like your own means. So I like violently don't recommend this for anyone. And I also heard that on Amazon, it's being shelved as for 12 and above. This is like brutal, very, very brutal and violent. Uh, this is an adult book for sure. And the child's uh, rating should be removed like <laughs> immediately. Uh, yeah, so don't recommend that one either. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, it does get better. We're on the we're on the up. Okay, we're on the up now. Uh, so after that, I picked up Monster Love uh, by Carol Topolsky. This one I'm reading for the Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon. This is for a woman author and also a book you've never heard anyone talk about before. And this one is such a mixed mixed bag. It's such a mixed bag because we're following a couple who you find out very early on have starved to death their young daughter and have kept her imprisoned in a cage like an animal for her first like three to four years of life. And it's kind of about following the ripple effect of that. And every single chapter is a different point of view. There are over 20 points of views in here uh, where it's like everyone that was tangentially knew or knows either of the parents gets to like have a point of view, um, which normally I don't like, but in this instance, most of the points of views were actually interesting because it dealt with like their childhood or like the court case and so on. So the first half of the book is kind of being drip fed what has actually happened to the daughter and what, what like their modern life in the neighborhood looks like. Then a quarter of it is the trial and then a quarter of it is like jail. Um, and gosh, I just don't know how to feel because I couldn't stop reading. But at the same time, I felt like because the author didn't give a point of view to the little girl at any at any time, you're supposed to like empathize, sympathize with how the parents came to the conclusion that they did, like seeing their daughter as a threat to their life together. And I'm 0% here for it. <laughs> like. I'm like, no, nothing, nothing, no point of view you could ever tell me makes me like feel bad for them or empathize with them at all, ever. <laughs> they did something so brutal and so disgusting that like, I, I don't care, I'm not empathetic. I read to the end to see what happened. I wanted to know what would happen and like how things would play out for them, but 0% of me was empathetic. So. Yes, this is very dark, very gruesome, and I gave it three stars. It's a completely mixed, mixed up book. Uh, definitely like worst parents award ever, probably go to these parents. Um, yeah, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So after that, like rays from above came down and were like, you know what, you deserve a good book. Cause that was a lot of like bad to lukewarm back to back. Uh, so let's go ahead and give you a good book. So I read Consent by Vanessa Springora, who is a French writer. And this was, I like don't want to say good, but like the book itself was riveting. And it made me furious. And I gave it four stars. But it's vile. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, Vanessa in modern day is around 40 years old. And she is very successful in the publishing industry. 
but this story is focusing on her childhood where she was groomed by a very famous pedophilic male author. And the thing that is so shocking, so shocking about this book, like, ah, so shocking, her parents knew, her friends knew, like people at the publishing house knew, and the police knew. Everyone knew that like this 13, 14 year old girl was being groomed or having sexual relations with this like 50 year old man. And the, um, there's a major debate in the book about how in the past in France, uh, art trumped morality. So everyone would just say, oh, he's an artist, you know? And I'm like, what do you mean he's an artist? Like, he doesn't just get off because he's an artist. Like, he doesn't just, like, get to groom 14-year-old girls, like, because he's an artist. But yeah, that was the case. Like, like really, that's, that's what's happening here. So I'm just, like, reading the book in utter disbelief. And I'm, like, so, so angry for the main character and in shock at the shambles of like protection for this young girl in France. I was like, what France? What are you doing? Like, oh, I'm getting so worked up about it. Like even now. Um, and it was shocking because when I went to like look this up in 2013, the pedophilic author who his books are journals of him sleeping with underage people. Anyway, he won a literature award in France in 2013. And I'm like, 2013? For fuck's sake, France? So, yeah, overall I gave it four stars. I think that the story is obviously harrowing. It make, will make you super angry. And it also, like, left me in awe of Vanessa's, like, strength as a person. Because I'm like, she's achieved massive success and no thanks to anyone in her childhood. Like, literally, fuck all of them. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you to Avi, Olivia, for recommending this. It was the first good book, the first really good book that I read in August. And I was like, thank you. A book that I, like, really connected with and could really strongly recommend. Um, and then after that, I'd read a lot of really dark stuff. Like, murder of a girl, like, partner abuse, murder of a child like grooming. So I was like, oh, it's so dark. It's getting so dark in August. So I was like, okay, I want to read a romance. If you know, romance, I'm trying to read less of in 2021. But I was like, I need something light and I need something highly rated. So like I can just enjoy my romance and feel good. So I picked up Defender of Walls, number one by Tanya Bird, because I saw that number two had just come out, like when I searched like recently released romances and it had super high ratings. So this shit was so good. Oh my God. If you like romance, I highly recommend these two books. The third one is out next year, unfortunately. I'm very sad. I'm very sad about it, but I'm anticipating. So if you like romance, this is for you. So this is a dystopian medieval world where we are set in like a walled off Wales, uh, where it has been cloudy and raining for years. No sun at all. Um, and this has created a really harsh disparity between the classes. So inside the walled Wales, there's like different uh, levels of people. So there's like, you know, um, the merchants, the farmers, the royalty, the nobles, um, and they all kind of have walls within the wall, if that makes sense. Um, and it's really hard because uh, the people at the bottom who are the merchants, who are being the most impacted, um, they are starving. So as the book opens, we are following Blake, who is desperately trying to convince her older brother not to tunnel under the wall into the farming like community, because if he's caught, he will be killed immediately by the defenders who are like, the soldiers of the, the realm. Um, he doesn't listen to her because the family is starving. So he descends into the tunnels, things go very badly, and um, she runs into a defender who is our main male character, who's actually the commander of the defenders, and his name is Harlan. Um, 
and the story starts off from there. So Blake is having to figure out how to care for her family and how to prevent starvation and the commander is also torn between um, doing what the royal family wants and also like helping the people who are starving. And holy holy butt holy butt okay like tanya bird's writing style is so good so good witty sharp sarcastic slow burn banter we have like a female heroine who oh did i mention she's extremely good with knives she's very loyal and then we also have uh, the main guy he's obviously the commander of the defender so he can fight good <laughs> obviously uh, he's built like a brick shit house but he's also so patient and very long suffering when it comes to Blake um, because he's always like, can you like not get in trouble? And she's like, I'll do my best. And then lo and behold, lo and behold. Yeah, so I gave the first one, Defender of Walls, four and a half stars. And I gave the second one, Defender of Hearts, which I read immediately after, like uh, I finished and then I went to the second one. I gave it four plus stars. The second one deals a bit more with court intrigue, more than socioeconomic conflict. Um, and court intrigue isn't necessarily my favorite. I'm not gonna say more than that because I don't wanna spoil anything. But yeah, if you like romance, this would be for you. I loved it. And I will absolutely be reading the third one like as soon as it comes out next year. I cannot wait. It was just so good. It was so good. So um, yeah, three good books back to back. I was like, okay, I'm ready for some dark, dark stuff again. So I read Antarctica of Love, which is a Swedish translation. Um, and it is out September 30th. Uh, so it's not not out yet, but it will be. Um, and this is very dark. It is basically picture Lovely Bones, but the adult version set in Sweden. Um, so we are following a woman who has recently been raped, strangled, and dismembered. And her ghost is kind of floating above and reliving her life non-chronologically. So sometimes it's the moment of her murder, sometimes it's the moment of her life on the streets as a drug user, sometimes it's moments of her childhood, sometimes it's like other triggering moments throughout time. Um, and for me, I just, I don't know, I gave this book three stars. I felt kind of meh about it because on the, on the good side, the writing is so beautiful. Sarah Stridsberg's writing style is to die for and it sounds bad but the death scene like along like this river and the way that the uh, the way that the murdered woman talks about her own body and the decay is honestly beautiful and i was like damn that's dark but lovely um but on the other hand i didn't really like how repetitious it was because the ghost is really like reminiscing and going over certain moments in her life over and over and over again so a lot of the time i was just like oh this scene again and i kept having to read it to get to new scenes do you know what i mean so personally i think this could have been about a hundred pages shorter than it is and I don't know if I would really recommend it. I'm not sure. I'm like very lukewarm about it because um, I think if you love beautiful writing and if you want to see kind of the darker life of life, life on the streets and drug abuse in sex work in Sweden, then go for it. Um, but in terms of really connecting with the character and it it having a lasting impact on me, I just don't think that that's going to be the case. Um, so then after that, I was like, okay, let's just keep the dark train rolling. I'm already on it. Um, so I read At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop. No. He is a Senegalese author. This was translated from the French, and this has been on my, like, TBR <laughs> for a very long time because the premise sounds so cool. We're following the French army in World War I and 
the main character is fighting alongside one of his childhood friends. The friend goes down in battle and asks for a mercy killing to put him out of his misery, but our main character can't do it. So the friend dies and he feels absolute like anguish, so he decides to get revenge by sneaking across enemy lines every night to disembowel and then cut off the hand of one of the enemy soldiers. And at first, the people in his like battalion are like, wow, you're so brave. But like after the fourth hand, they're like, oh my god, you're crazy. Stop it. Um, and you might be like a soul thief. So we're going to send you away from here. Um, so, okay, let's talk about why I really did not like this book. I like hated this book. Um, there are so many things that like are not are not good. So first off, we're just going to get it out of the way. If I hear God's truth one more time, I'm going to kill someone. Uh, God's truth was said as a phrase 154 times in 152 pages, including like the title pages. Like some pages, God's truth was said like six times. And I was like, I hate this. I wish I could just, as an editor, like hit control find and then delete every single instance of that. But there were so many phrases that were so repeated every single time it came up, I would get more and more annoyed. Um, as well as it's very evident that this book is not for anyone <sighs> that hates gratuitous images of women or abuse of women. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Like the trenches in war are compared to a woman's open genitalia. This ends in like the most horrible way, unnecessary. I'm like, if you don't want to know the ending, spoiler, I'm going to talk about it. So, um, skip ahead until you see the book image change. Uh, he just basically goes insane and like rapes a woman and kills her while he's raping her. And that's the end of the book. And I'm like, wow, I hated this. I hated everything to do with this. The only thing I liked was the initial premise and his flashbacks to life in Senegal. Those were interesting everything together, two and a half stars, and I'm only giving it an extra half because of the interesting things about Senegal that I learned, such as like nomadic life versus village life and courting rituals and food. That was very interesting. I didn't know about that. But as a book in general, I hated it. Don't recommend. Um, all right. So then after that, I was like, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's read something that's a bit action-y because I'm starting to like slump down again. So I read Hybrid Child by Mariko O'Hara. Uh, this has been on my shelf for a very long time and I'm so glad that I finally read it. Um, and I gave it three and a half stars. So this is a super complex, complicated, convoluted sci-fi, but that I think is personally so, so worth it. Um, this is definitely one of the ones where if you don't like a lot of characters, if you don't like a long time span, thinking like 800 years, this will absolutely not be for you. So just don't even, don't even try. But um, this was bizarre and weird and wonderful. And yeah, let's get into it. So we are following sample B number three, who is an immortal war machine that can shape shift and take on the form of anything it samples. So here, picture No Face from Spirited Away times Transformers. So B13 can transform into like animals, people, and machines. It's so dope. It's so cool. The transformation scenes, the fight scenes are like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, I wanna be in the author's imagination, like some acid trip dreams happening in here. Um, we're also, so that's the main character, but also some of the other characters that are like woven into the story. There is like an 800 year old baby who when it's born is born an old ancient man with like all the knowledge of the 800 years and he's slowly Benjamining button backwards. Like if you've seen Akira and you know the espers, who have like knowledge, but they're like old babies who can time travel like that. Like there's like, that's another character. And then there is a 
planet-wide maternal sentience who's kind of slowly going insane and breaking down um, on this like aqua planet in deep space and that's like another major character and then I'd say like the fourth major character is known as Shiver Mouse who is um, a man young boy man who whose body was breaking down so the maternal planet decided to preserve him in this like white indestructible coffin that feeds him it can fly and it can fight it's like a war machine as well and shiver mouse befriends b3 who is at that time going by jonah which is the name of the young girl whose corpse he consumed in the beginning of the book so there are just so many interesting aspects in here i just i want people to read it but i'm also like it's so dark so like if that sounds interesting to you please check my goodreads review for triggers because there are so many in here there is a lot of dark stuff like a lot um but i was like fascinated like the imagination in here is unparalleled this is one of the weirdest books i've read i think ever so uh i can't get it out of my mind and like the whole premise of b b3 and jonah and like just using the pronouns of whatever form the machine or like the entity is in is like mind-blowing oh and also i really love the ending i totally fucked with it i know a lot of people might not um but we'll just agree to disagree because i thought it was a great ending um yeah so if any of that sounds intriguing to you i do recommend this i do recommend it it's just like a lot it's a lot a lot but i found it worth it all right <laughs> we are to the last book that i read so far in august and this is he made me do it by zeeshine storm who is a fijian author uh and i've never read from a fijian author before so i was pretty excited um, this is a male male forbidden romance and we're just gonna let's just get it out of the way okay so the forbidden part is that they're stepbrothers so okay ho hold on <laughs> before you get really angry um, the stepbrother part they're not related by blood their parents just married and like the first time that they ever see each other there's no brotherly feeling like they both think the other one's wicked hot the problem is that Zane is a closeted gay Muslim boy who's 17 years old and his father is a very devout Muslim uh, and he's very straight laced and like he's not out and he's like oh my god how am I gonna live with like this super hot guy I'm attracted to who I now have to call like my stepbrother uh, and then the other one is Asher who is like out and proud and he loves to have a good time he's kind of like uh, kind of like always making jokes and he's really close to his mom he's half French um, and he immediately is like wow yeah my my new brother's like really hot uh, so that doesn't bother me the whole like stepbrother thing because very clearly they're not they didn't grow up together they don't have brotherly feelings they're not blood related I don't care um, so to me that part was fine and the thing is, the first half of the book was going to be a four and a half to a five star. I thought that this book was going to be like one of my new favorite queer romances of all time because there's two aspects. There is the closeted aspect where you have the straight laced closeted Zane who is really struggling with his feelings. And also Asher like doesn't know he's gay. So he's like, it's a very slow realization that they both feel the way they feel towards each other. And the second part is obviously Zane's deep like torture over the fact that his religion and his father don't accept homosexuality and like that it's a huge sin. And it's a big deal because he's very religious and he loves his father very, very deeply. So there is a lot of like just tension and torment and slow build and I was getting so nervous I was like no like oh my god I want to just protect Zane with my whole heart and I'm like Asher you better not fuck it up man like oh my god I'm so nervous um so at that point about halfway through unfortunately for me 
uh, is when they develop, like, they realize their feelings, they develop, like, a sexual relationship, and then it just takes off into erotica. And I'm like, no, why? So, the sex scenes were, yes, very hot, but, uh, I think it really took away from the gravitas of, like, the first half of the book, um, and then the end is very rushed, and I just really wish that it had, like, maintained the pace and the trajectory of the first half, because if it had, and it had gone on in that, like, kind of very serious way, I picture myself being destroyed at the end of that book. I will be reading this author in the future because just the character, like, smolder together and the tension, especially in the first half of the book, like, was just excellent in my opinion. So I ended up giving this four stars, even though there were a few things that I didn't particularly like about how it developed like later on, but it was still super strong and I highly recommend it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in August. I'm sure that this wrap up is going to be so long. Um, I don't know how long, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you're reading and I will see you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye!